Welcome back to Thinking Christianly. On this video, I'm going to teach you how to defend the doctrine of the Trinity from just one verse in the Old Testament. All right, well, welcome back to Thinking Christianly with Grant VB. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that way you get notifications whenever Take Hold Studios puts out new content. On this video, I'm going to teach you how to defend the doctrine of the Trinity with just one verse from the Old Testament. So let's get right to it. Okay, this one verse that I'm going to teach you how to defend the Trinity from just the Old Testament is Isaiah 48, 16. Let's read it right now. Isaiah 48, 16. It says, Draw near to me, hear this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. All right, so pay attention to this verse. Look at that last sentence. It says, And now the Lord God, so that's Yahweh Elohim, there's one person, has sent me, there's two people, and his spirit, there's three, okay? Right from this verse, we see three people. We see God the Father, and we see God the Son, the one whom the Father sends. We know this from the New Testament, but it's still a distinction, so we can see two separate persons there. And then a further distinction, the third person of the Trinity, the Spirit. Boom. Done. Okay. Okay. What if someone says, or maybe you're saying right now, how do I know who this me is? How do I know that the me in this verse is Jesus? What if it's Isaiah? And there's actually a lot of scholars who will say that. They won't say that this is talking about the second person of the, Trin the, Trinity, the Trinity, Christ. They'll say this is Isaiah the prophet. He's just talking about himself, how the Lord sent him on his prophetic ministry and that he sent his spirit too to empower him for the prophetic ministry. Okay, fair enough. Let's dig into that. Why can't this be Isaiah? Well, this is why context matters, right? Context, context, context is king. It's cults who strip verses out of passages and build a whole system of faith off of one verse, right? So let's not do that. Let's back up a little bit here in this passage to verse 12 and 13. And I think they shed some much-needed light. Look at verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob, and to Israel, whom I called. I am he. I am the first, and I am the last. So this is probably not Isaiah, right? I don't think Isaiah is eternal. He's a man. Look at verse 13. My hand laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together. So it's like a commander in the army he says, when I say attention, they all get into the position of attention. This is obviously not Isaiah that is being talked about here. The, the, the person who's talking in this passage is not Isaiah. From scripture, we know from John 1 and from Hebrews 1, and I think uh, Colossians speaks of it too. My bad. But Jesus is the agent by which the Father created all things. This is what we get from Scripture. Jesus is called the Word of God in John 1, and it was the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, in Genesis 1, how do we see God creating all things? He spoke it into existence. It was his Word that he used to create all things. So when it talks about my hand laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand spread out the heavens. Every time we see God being described in physical terms, it's talking about the second person of the Trinity, the pre-incarnate Christ. Because he is the one whom we see and have seen the Father, right? That's what Jesus said. So, anyway, this is, this is clearly talking about the second person of the Trinity. And then again, verse 16, it culminates there and just says, and next. It says all these things about himself and says, and now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. So we have three persons that are divine mentioned here in verse 16. And if you are, let's say, evangelizing with a Jew who doesn't recognize the New Testament as God's word to God's people, they only hold the Old Testament as God's word to God's people. You can prove 
the Trinity to them right here from this one and only verse. It might be kind of like actually proving it from three verses, but really it's just that one verse. So anyway, I thought that was really cool. I wanted to share that with all of you guys. I hope that's encouraging and I hope that's helpful for you. I hope this encourages and helps you to continue to think Christianly. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.